to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. Hallelujah. 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 So we've come to make a joyful noise unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Why? Because the Lord our God is a great God. Amen. Because the Lord our God is a great God. That's reason to give him praise. That's reason to come before him with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. And because he is king above all gods. He's not only a great God. He's not only the great God. But he is the great God above all All gods. All gods. Every situation. Everything that can be exalted. Hallelujah. He is God above it. All is God above all gods. All situations. Hallelujah. And so we give our great God a great praise today. We give our great God a great praise today. Let's open our mouth and give God, our great God, a great praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 So this morning, I welcome each and every one of you. Hallelujah. That is watching us via Facebook and YouTube. I welcome you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the Word Church, our pastor. Hallelujah. Apostle Dr. Clement Neely. Hallelujah has a word from the Lord today just for you. Hallelujah. So thank you for tuning in. I encourage you to share the broadcast. I encourage you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To share. Hallelujah. And to stay tuned. Stay tuned to receive what the Lord has for you today. Hallelujah. 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 And this morning we we, we come with grateful hearts. Hallelujah. To worship our God. To worship the King of Kings. Hallelujah, and the Lord's of Lords. And we invite our praise team to continue in, a, in the worship this morning. Hallelujah, say lead us higher, 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 higher in worship to give our great God a great praise today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Anybody brought their praise with them this morning? Anybody know that we serve a great God, so he deserves a great praise? Anybody brought their best praise this morning? Oh! Give you praise, give you praise for the rest of my days. Oh, 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 I give you praise, give you praise for the rest of my days. Sing, oh. Lift your hands and praise him. If you came to praise him, lift your hands and praise him. You got to clap your hands. You got to do your dance. Come on and praise him. Oh, 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 I'll give you praise. Give you praise for the rest of my days. Oh, oh, oh. Give you praise, give you praise for the rest of my days. One more time. Oh, 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 oh. give you praise, give you praise for the rest of my days. Hallelujah. Anybody came to give him praise this morning? Shake yourself loose and begin to give him praise. For he came from heaven to earth to show us the way. Anybody happy that he came to give us a new life? He came to forgive us of every sin. Oh, yeah. Lord, I lift your name on high. 
Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing, sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came. So glad you came. You came from heaven, you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt you pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad, so glad you're in my I'm so glad you came from heaven, you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death you paid from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came, you came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my death to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Why don't you lift him up a little bit higher? Lift him up a little bit higher. Lift him up a little bit higher. Why don't you lift him up a little bit higher? Lift him up a little bit higher. Lift him up a little bit higher. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. So glad you're in my life. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you came today. He came from heaven. You, you came, came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death my you pay from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. You can, you, you came, came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debts you paid from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death still paid it all from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Anybody grateful? Hallelujah. Anybody grateful for his great sacrifice? Anybody thankful for the great sacrifice? God, we love you, Lord. Everything that is within us, it should yearn for him. Anybody have a great hunger in their spirits for him? Do you know that we belong to him? The very breath that you are breathing, it belongs to him. My God, who is concerned about all of us? He is king of glory. He is Lord of lords. He is our father. He is our creator. Who knows us better than he does? No one. Nobody knows us better than he does. Hallelujah. Oh God, we lift you up, Lord. You are Father Lord, we call you Father Lord, we call you Father Lord, you're more real than the wind in my lungs, hallelujah, and you're more This ground I'm standing on. His thoughts define us. Hallelujah. Oh, 
your thoughts define me you're inside of us you're inside of me you are mine he's our reality reality now if you know that your life is not your own you ought to cry i belong i belong to you i belong to you my life is not my own belong to him this morning I encourage you to open up your mouth and begin to give him some praise this morning I don't know about you but I've seen the goodness of the Lord and I've seen his hand move in situations that might have seemed like there was no end that there was failure but I know that Abba he cares and he's concerned about everything concerning us and we can thank him this morning we who belong to him he's like a father that no other father he's concerned about you and me oh I call you Abba If you know that you belong to him this morning. Saints, I think we could do a little bit better. Can we give the God of God Hallelujah. praise? Can you Hallelujah. find anyone like him anywhere? 
I don't think so. Let's begin to give God some praise. Let's begin to go a bit higher in praise. Let's begin to give him worship. Let's begin to give him praise. Let's begin to give him glory. He deserves the glory. Can you remember those days when you thought about the things you did, what he kept you in spite of it all? You didn't deserve the grace he gave, but he kept you in spite of it all. You should have been caught up in your sin, headed to the grave, but he kept you. He kept you in his presence. We can find fullness of joy in his presence. We can find peace in his presence. We can find everything that we need. We can find healing in his presence. We can find safety in his presence. He said, behold, here I stand at the door knocking. Would you let him in today? Would you let him in today? Would you experience his presence today? Would you experience the rumor of his glory today? Anybody hungry for the glory of the Lord? Anybody hungry for the presence of the Lord? Anybody hungry just to taste the presence of the Lord? For we know that in his presence, there is freedom. I'm talking about freedom from the things in your mind that nobody else knows about. It's in his presence. If you would just tap into his presence. Oh God, we give you glory. We give him praise. God, we thank you for your presence. We your people are here just to give you praise, God. We're here to reverence you, God. We want a glory in his presence. Anybody want a glory in his presence? Anybody want to go deeper in his presence this morning? I feel him knocking. Would you let him in? Would you let him in? Would you let him in? Would you let him do what he came to do? Would you let him in? Would you give him just the opportunity to be God, to be who he is in your life? Won't you let him be God? He wants to be who he is. Would you let him in? Oh, would you let him in? Would you let him in? He just wants to come in. Won't you let him in? Let him in your heart. Let him in your mind. Let him in your spirit. Get rid of everything else. It's all about him. It's all about him. Let him in. Let him in. Let him in. Let him in. Jesus is knocking at the door. Let him in. Let him in. He wants you to let him in. He says, let me in. Won't you let me in, daughter? Won't you let me in, son? I've been waiting for the opportunity to transform you, to make you new, to revitalize you, to redeem you. If you let me in, Hallelujah. if you just let me in, Hallelujah. I want to do a new thing. If you let me in, I don't want to come second to nobody. Oh, my child, just let me in. I don't want to be second. Just let me in. Just let me in. Let me in. Put those things aside and let me in. Let my spirit rule. You are mine anyway, but let me in. Hey, hey, hey. Won't you let me in? Somebody let him in. Nobody is more important than he is. 
just let him in. Hallelujah. Oh, just let him in. Yes, Lord, you will. Let him direct your path. If you put him first, he will make it all new for you. My God, he says, just let me in and let me do what I can do. I'm your provider. I'm your sustainer. I'm your mind regulator. I know you let nobody else know your child. Oh, if you just let him in and let him do what he wants yes, to do. Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, you increase in us. Hallelujah. So arise from your rest and be blessed by our breath. Sacrifice on the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we give him just one more big praise Hallelujah. for what he's done? Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. We are grateful people, God. We are thankful, God. We are thankful, God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
you oh god thank you jesus hallelujah 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 it's our prayer time hallelujah hallelujah jesus hallelujah thank you jesus it's always it's always good to come at the place of prayer hallelujah 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 and this morning we invite those who are watching with us on facebook and also on youtube we welcome you to post your prayer request, post your prayer petitions. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As we go into our time of prayer, hallelujah, we will be covering those petitions. Hallelujah, before the Lord. Hallelujah. Our, our intercessory ministry, hallelujah, we'll be covering those, those, those petitions before the Lord. Hallelujah, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah, as we, as we, Mount our prayer mountain this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's always a good time to pray. It's always a good time to pray, to come before our God. Hallelujah. 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 And this morning, I invite those in the sanctuary to join in in the prayer as you open up your mouth. Hallelujah. And give God, hallelujah, a worthy prayer and praise. Hallelujah. This morning. Hallelujah. And so let us come before the Lord in prayer this morning. Hallelujah. Our God and our Father, our Master and our King, our Redeemer. Hallelujah. 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 And our soon coming King. Father, we bless your holy name this morning. We acknowledge, oh God, your presence in this place. We acknowledge, oh God, that we are nothing without you. We acknowledge, oh God, our need of you this morning, God. God, we've come this morning in the name of Jesus, God. God, to honor you, God, to give you praise, oh God. Hallelujah, to give you glory this morning in the name of Jesus. And so, Father God, we thank you today, oh God. God, for you, oh God, our, our, our Savior this morning, God. Father, you redeemed our life from the pit, oh God, and you've crowned us, oh God, with loving kindness this morning. It's because of your kindness this morning that we are here. It's because of your mercies this morning that we are here, God. And so this morning, God, we've come, God, in repentance this morning, oh God. Father, forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us, oh God, from all unrighteousness this morning, oh God. Father God, we pray, oh God, God, that you wash us clean, oh God, by the blood of Jesus Christ, oh God. Wash us, oh God. Give us clean hands, oh God, to serve you, God. Give us, oh God, clean hearts, oh God, pure hearts, oh God. God, that we will come, oh God, God, with our worship, oh God. God, God, that is worthy, oh God, unto your name, oh God. Father God, that we will walk, oh God, in holiness and in righteousness righteousness before you, oh God. God, oh God, clean our hands, oh God. God, make the ground of our heart, oh God, good soil, God, to receive your word today, God. God, give us a revival, God, a personal revival in our hearts today, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, that we, oh God, will be able, oh God, 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 to receive the engrafted word of God, the truth, oh God, of your word, oh God, God, that we may live thereby, God, that we may be transformed thereby, oh God, God, that we may share your word thereby, oh God, God, that we may, oh God, ascend, oh God, thereby, oh God, and so Father, in the name of Jesus, God, oh God, revive us afresh today. Revive our hearts, revive our soul, oh God, revive us afresh today in the name of Jesus, God. Oh God, do what only you could do in these vessels of clay, oh God. Oh God, oh God, melt them down before you, oh God. Oh God, put us back, oh God, on the potter's wheel, oh God, and do a new work in us, oh God. God, the new thing, God, that you desire to do in us, God. God, we welcome you, you, oh God, to do it, God. We open ourselves for you to do it, God. God, we say do it in the name of Jesus, oh God. Do it in us, oh God. Do a will in us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you this morning, God. We bless your name this morning, oh God. Revive us afresh this morning in the name of Jesus, oh God. 
Oh God, we thank you this morning, oh God. Come and live in us afresh, oh God. Oh God, and do the new thing, oh God, that only your word can do, God. Father God, oh God, prepare our hearts, oh God. Even God, as we live, oh God, in, in the readiness, oh God, of your return in the name of Jesus, God. So cause us to walk in the new level of holiness. Cause us, oh God, to go deeper in you, oh God. God, prick our hearts, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. Oh God, give us that desire, that passion, God, to go deeper in you, oh God. Oh God, God, that our hearts, oh God, are ready, oh God, oh God, for your return, oh God. And Father God, help us, oh God, God, to help someone else to be ready, oh God, by sharing the word of truth, oh God. God, that others, oh God, God will be ready, God, to receive Christ, oh God. And so, Father God, we say thank you this morning, God. We worship you this morning, oh God. We bless your name this morning, God. God, as the word go forth today, God, we pray, God, an unction, God, will rest upon, oh God, our pastor this morning, oh God. Father, from on high, oh God, God, oh God, give him a fresh, a fresh, oh God, baptism this morning in the name of Jesus, God. Of grace, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. God of strength, oh God, of power, God, through your Holy Spirit, oh God. God, speak to him, oh God, this morning, oh God. God, oh God, afresh this morning in the name of Jesus, God. Give him on the spot revelation, oh God. Use him mightily this morning in the name of Jesus, God. Strengthen him mightily this morning in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, let the words of his mouth, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, be the words of your heart in the name of Jesus, God. Give us hearts to receive it, God, in the name of Jesus. Give us ears to hear, God. Open up our ears, oh God. Open up our understanding in the name of Jesus, God, that we may receive receive truth this morning, oh God. Oh God, to live thereby in the name of Jesus, God. Transform us, oh God, by your glory, God. Transform us, oh God, by your glory, oh God. Let your holiness, oh God, rest upon us in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, like only you can, like only you can, oh God, uh, strengthen us, oh God. God, to live, oh God, in the holiness, oh God, God, in which you desire, God. Oh God, take us to a new level of faith in you, oh God, for without it, God, we cannot please you, oh God. So, Father God, oh God, increase our faith, oh God. And Father God, where we are weak, oh God, Help us, oh God, in our unbelief, oh God. Help us in our infirmities in the name of Jesus, God. God, that we may mount up, oh God. God, on wings, oh God, of eagles in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, in faith in the name of Jesus, God. Receiving, oh God, your word this morning, oh God. And so, Father God, we say thank you this morning. We say thank you this morning, God. We say thank you for all that you are doing, God. We say thank you, God, for what you are going to do, God. We say thank you this morning, oh God, for we know, oh God, God, that you are able to do more than we can think, ask, or imagine, God. And so every matter, God, we bring before you, God, is a small matter, oh God. But Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we stand in faith, oh God, believing, oh God, that you have heard us this morning, God. And God, you said, if you... If we believe, God, that you have heard us, God. God, you said we have whatsoever, God, we have asked for, God, according to your will, oh God. God, it is your will, God, that men will be saved, God. It is your will, God, that we walk in holiness, God. It is your will, God, God, that we are revived in our spirits, oh God. It is your will, God, God, that we hear your word this morning, God, and be transformed, oh God. It is your word, oh God. God, that we, oh God, live in the readiness, oh God, of your, oh, oh God, of your second coming this morning, God. And so, Father God, we thank you, oh God. God, as we walk, oh God, in faith, oh God. God, as we walk, oh God, oh God, oh God, according to your word, oh God. God, we hasten your return, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, by walking according to your will, oh God. Oh God, by walking, oh God. Oh God, oh God, and lifting up your name, oh God, and drawing God all men unto you, Jesus. And so, Father God, we say thank you this morning. Father God, we bless your name this morning. Father God, we magnify your name this morning. We are grateful, oh God. We are grateful for all that you have done. God, we are grateful for what you are about to do, God. And Father God, we stand, oh God. Oh God, oh God, as, as waiting vessels, oh God, to receive, oh God, all which you will deposit in us this morning in the name of Jesus, oh God. Make us conduits for your glory, oh God. 
Make us conduits, oh God, God for salvation, God. Make us conduits, oh God, God to, 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 to cause men, oh God, God to be in readiness of your return, oh God. Make us the conduits, God, God that you desire for good works in the name of Jesus. And so Father God, we say thank you this morning. And we say thank you this morning. And we give you glory this morning. And we magnify your name this morning. And we bless you this morning. Let's open our mouth and give God a praise this morning. Hallelujah. Let's give him thanks this morning. Hallelujah. Let's open our mouth and give him all the glory, all the honor that is due unto his name this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Coming with the word this morning as our own pastor. Hallelujah. Apostle Dr. Clement Neely. Hallelujah. To break the bread of life this morning. Hallelujah. 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 We have prepared our hearts. We are ready for the word. Father, we are ready for your word. We are ready for your word. But just before he comes, we'll invite Sister Jessie. She will come with a poem. Hallelujah. 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 Let's welcome her as she comes. And as uh, our pastor come with the word. Let us stand as he come with the word, Sister Jessie. Good morning. This poem is called Wrong Place. <clears throat> Judgment day is here, yet I'm not nervous. I did what God asked of me. I know he'll let me in. I'm the 777th person in line, so I'm not worried. It's, an, it's the number of completion. I've got this in the bag. The pace of the line is sporadic. He takes long on his children, but he barely spares the word to the sinners. He'll take his time with me. The sinners cry and scream and beg, but God doesn't spare them a glance. I'm glad he doesn't. It's not like they deserve it. There's two people left in front of me. The first one, God takes his time. He tells them how much he loves them and how proud he is of all the things they did. The person falls to the ground crying. They begin praising God and thanking him. Jesus sits at God's right hand and smiles so brightly. Welcome home, he says, as the person is escorted into heaven. The second person in front of me, he just holds his head low, almost as if he knew his name wasn't in the book. He tried to ask for forgiveness, help, anything, but Jesus wasn't having it. He said one sentence, get away from me, dog. The person said nothing as he was dragged into hell. I wasn't going to hell, so I wasn't worried. I stepped up and waited for God to praise me, to congratulate me, to tell me how proud I made him. But he didn't spare me a glance. Jesus didn't stare at, Jesus didn't smile at me and no one rejoiced. Tears welled up in my eyes. Get away from me, dog. Jesus said, no, 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 no. I served you, I screamed. Every Sunday I was in church. I rebuked every sinner. I followed your teaching. I belong in heaven, I yelled as my feet is dragged from underneath me. I, I tried to claw my way to God's feet, but to no avail. I'm greeted by hot flames and the smell of sulfur. The screams are deafening, and the smell of burning flesh irritates my nose. But the screams are my own. The burning is my flesh. I'm in the wrong place, I tried to scream. Am I in the wrong place? <laughs> Wow. Oh, what an awful picture. There was a song we used to sing years ago, Standing Outside. And that's the picture that that poem evokes. That all your life you could think to yourself you are all right. Think to yourself you're doing it right only to be greeted with depart from me mm. bow your heads please father we thank you today even in this sober moment in this sober time of reflection as we come to look at your word today we thank you that 
through your word, we have an opportunity to make it right. We have an opportunity to make sure that that is not our fate, that we are not in the wrong place. We have an opportunity today to hear your word. And your word says, if today you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Father, we thank you for this time in your word. We ask that you would cause the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable unto you. Oh God, my strength and redeemer. Amen. Would you remain standing, please? Turn your Bibles to Joel chapter 2. Thank you, Jesse. Before you turn your Bibles, would you clap your hands? Let's thank God for the talent, the grace on the life of the youths of our church. Thank you so much, Jesse. Thank you for that very expressive poem and it really sparked exactly what it was supposed to do. It was supposed to send signals throughout the airwaves that many people are thinking to themselves they are right, but maybe in the wrong place. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2, and I want to read in your hearing, beginning at verse 21. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastors of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine tree do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month, and the floors shall be full of wheat and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten and canker worm and the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Verse 26, ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Verse 27, you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed. Would you put your Bibles down for a moment? And I want you to raise a praise if you are ready for the word today. Hallelujah. All over the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Come on, raise a praise unto the Lord today. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, Zion. You can do better than that. Raise a praise all over the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in this presence. Thank you for standing. Thank you for honoring the reading of his word today. To God be all the glory. Last week we began um, this subject, first things first. We are in the second Sunday in the year of our Lord 2022. We've had a week of weeks. I'm sure many of you have experienced, if not some degree of firsthand um, direct connection with this whole wave of what's happening many of you have felt it secondhand um connected to someone who has been not well um it's all it almost appears that every house every family has felt some degree of challenge this has been a challenging week my house has not been spared as you can tell lady neely and clemia are not in the sanctuary today um they've all checked out um negative results but not feeling well at all and i i too was like them this week under the weight of physical infirmity physical affliction as many persons as you look around in the sanctuary and you recognize that there are many persons who are not with us today and they're not just um, playing absent from church. There are many people who are genuinely not feeling well. And in all caution, we urge persons, once you are not well, to remain home and watch the broadcast online, if you will. Um, our country seems to be in the midst of one of the worst waves that we have seen. I know that we have not experienced on any given day, one day having 800 and something new cases and that was the case on yesterday 
818 new cases, 754 in New Providence alone in one day, in one day. That's what we're facing, 818 new cases in one day on the 7th of January. And so we are grateful. Thank you, Pastor Rachel, for leading us today. We're grateful today for the opportunity to be here. And I, I say that not to alarm anyone. I say that not to scare anyone. You would have heard my message over the last several weeks, Pastor Roland, challenging the church, uh, Elisha. And you would have heard me say to this same very church, get ready for days that are going to be difficult. I did say to you, I did give you all, all relevant warnings of what is to come. And, and, and true prophets, Minister Diamond, must shoot it as it is, not what people want to hear. And, and you've seen me say over and over again that I'm not moved by the temperamental body language of the people trying to urge on a word when I know what I've heard in my spirit, Dana, that these are diff difficult days ahead. And I suspect, Sister Jones, we may have more days of difficulties uh, what we're dealing with now is just from a global perspective, but there is coming a, 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 a calculated attack against the Christian church. A calculated attack against those of us who are standing in Christ. How do I know this, Elisha? And the word of God says so. Jesus says in the last days, they're going to hate you and they're going to kill you for my name's sake. And then, so unless you've passed that, we've not fulfilled the word of God. And I believe that before, Pastor Rachel, before the great and terrible day of God will come, as you spoke of in the poem today, Jesse, I believe that some of us will have to go through testing of our faith, the trying of our faith. And I say this to today, church, that one reason why I am certain, Pastor Roland, I am certain that there is no easy way to deal with this um, Charlene, you can't pray this away. You can't cast this away. You can't come together and rebuke this. Because how do you rebuke what God sends? How do you rebuke what God sends? Um, I, I was looking at this particular text. Um, I was looking at this particular text. And, and I, I found that it's so interesting that God takes responsibility. We read in Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Um, and, and we see all of these difficult things happening. But then one, one thing I find interesting, that he addresses them as my strong army. My strong army. Hmm. They are sent by God, my strong army. So, last week we shared the three important principles. Well, I shared two with you, Pastor Roland. I'll share the third one today. Three important principles that the church needs to embrace if we are going to be, Jesse, on the right side of God's judgment, if we're going to be in the right place. And we said last week, began with repentance verse 12 therefore also now said the lord turn to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and i called the church on last week to repentance and i call you again today church this is a time for repentance in the body of christ if there are known sins in your life hear me church if there are known sins in your life i call upon you to live in repentance. You heard um, um, Jesse's poem today, so dramatic. And here she thinks to herself the assumption, and she's speaking um, um, on behalf of believers, quote unquote, who thought they were right, who thought they were doing right. Um, and, and, and you hear the 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 um, um the ambitious nature of her heart thinking to herself well i'm gonna hear him say well done come on and the good news and he doesn't even look in her face because he has no obligation to look in the face of those who does not belong to him he said i never knew you 
depart from me. And so I call upon the church today to repent, live in repentance. The second thing last week we challenged you with was a coming together. Look at verse 15, Joel chapter 2, verse 15, a coming together. Blow the trumpet in Zion, call a solemn assembly. Verse 16, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders. You saw us do this last week, uh, Pastor Rachel, where we gathered the elders, Rachel Road, we gathered the elders in the forefront. And the elders began to pray on behalf of the people. We gathered the leadership in the forefront to pray on behalf of the people. This is a time in the body of Christ when we are called to come together to pray. We call to come together as a people of God. We call to put aside whatever differences there is and work together for the kingdom of God. These are difficult days. These are not days to elevate your pride and elevate your personal agenda. These are days to sit and come together as a people, gathering ourselves for the for the thing for the things of God and for the advancing advancing of His kingdom. And then the third thing I want to challenge you with, I didn't share this last week. This is in verse seventeen. Verse seventeen says, "Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, spare the people." So the third thing I call upon you today, church, is for a coming together of deep prayer. There must be a coming together of deep prayer. We challenged on last week for us to gather together on yesterday, as you would have been told, but we called it off and we resume it for this Saturday coming, Lord will. Um, there is a need for the church to pray. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins. I will heal their land. There's a time for us to get together and pray. The church is wasting far too much time trying to appease people who are not even spiritual. The church is wasting far too much time worrying about who has the highest title, who has the highest honor, who is the, who is the highest official in the sanctuary. We're wasting precious time when we ought to be praying. We ought to be calling on the name of the Lord. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the time for the church to gather, to pray. The, the, the time to talk is over. The time to debate is over. The time to just argue and, and, and come together and all kinds of, of reasoning is over. The church must gather together and lay before the Lord in prayer. He's calling a spiritual church to hear to hear the hour that we're living in and recognize that the church ought to be praying. Heard E.M. Bounds say in his book, a church that is not praying is playing. And he says the preacher who is not praying is straying. The church is called to pray. We ought to pray. The Bible says men are always to pray. Come on, saints. And not to faint. We are called to pray. I call upon you even right now. I call upon you to understand that, that I believe that heaven is, this, is releasing a grace to pray. There, there, there's, there, he is descending upon us a spirit of prayer. Lift your hands in the sanctuary. Everyone watching this, there is a, there is a spirit of prayer descending upon the church. And I want you to understand this. If you're not sensing anything, and I, maybe I'm not talking to you, but I, I'm talking today, Dwight, to the remnant church. I'm talking to the true church of God. This is the one that he is laboring for because like, 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 like we understand, he's not coming for everybody. There are many that are going to say, Lord, Lord, and he's going to say, I never knew you. But the real church, he's calling us to come together to pray. The time that we are wasting, debating, the time that we are wasting attacking each other. The time that we are wasting seeking after carnal things. The kingdom is suffering violence. He's calling the church to pray. I pray even right now that there would rise in this sanctuary, in, this, in the fellowship of the saints, everyone watching this today, I pray that there would be a new spirit of prayer that would rest upon you. That your heart would not be settled until you would have answered to this higher call from Zion. A call to pray. A call to come together to pray. A call to seek help from the Lord. A call to make our hearts right with God. 
If you only understood, saints of God, the narrowness, Samantha, of the time that's left. If we only understood how the days are, are winding down, Dana, we, we would take advantage of all the time we have to do what we can for God in these closing days. Because, Minister Diamond, the time will come when only what is done for Christ will last. And some of you may be ashamed of what you've given yourself to in the closing days of eternity rather than giving yourself to the things of God. Rather than advancing the kingdom, you went after carnal flesh, thinking that you just wanted to be in the number, not realizing this is the probation this is only the probation. This is only the probation. This life is only the probation. Why are you going to lose it all on the probation? This is where you are tested for your real life that begins when you stand before him. This is simply the probation. And I fear that there are many who, have, who are losing hope because the probation period seems difficult. And the probation period seems like it's rough. It's supposed to feel that way. That's how probation is supposed to feel. But this is only preparing you for real life. Listen, I have an assignment. I have an assignment. And let me make this simple. Let me make this plain. And you've heard me say this as simple as I can. I have an assignment to prepare the church for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's simple. That's simple. I, that, nothing added to that. Nothing. I can't take away from that. My, I have an assignment to prepare the body of Christ for the return of Jesus Christ to this earth. The next great event that's going to hit this planet is not going to be release of monies. Because think about this. I want you to think about this, Pastor Roland. He gives you money, then what? Here's where we went wrong, Charlene. And this is where the church is going wrong. And I, I thought about this on last night, Elisha, and I thought about this on last night. This is where the church has gone wrong. The prophets have taken a context of God's word that, that speaks about blessings, that speaks about favor. So we have, watch this, Ella, we have taken a correct perspective, but put it in the wrong perspective. So, so we have made the favor and the blessings the end, when that is not the end. It's a means toward an end. God blessing you is not the end. Because ultimately at the end of the day, you are dying and leaving everything on this planet. So how could that be the end for him to say, well, now I'm favored. He, he, he just, he just I, all my bills are now paid off. And, and, and that was the ultimate end of what God was after. Ultimately, everything that God does in your life has the objective of advancing his kingdom. So if he blesses you, favors you, you ought to say to yourself, now that I have received from him, what do I do for him? If, 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 if all you are doing is just heaping it up and saying, I got it, now I got it. And that's it. You failed. Because he, whatever blessings he sends, he sends it to you so he could fill his purpose in the earth. And just like he said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Go there, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. He reminded me of this one yesterday. He said to Abraham, powerful promise and we've read this over and over again shouted on this but miss this revelation now the lord said to abram genesis chapter 12 verse 1 now the lord said to abram are you there get thee out of thy country from thy kindred and thy father's house unto land i will show you verse 2 and I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee. Stop right there. See, that's where the prophets stop. We stop right there, verse 2. I will bless thee. I will make your name great. 
but we fail to read that last part. Thou shalt be. That's where it ends. So if you have received, you are now a conduit to release. If you have received and you have you you shout, I got it, you walk away saying, He blessed me, then you fail the assignment. Verse 3, I'll bless them that bless thee, curse him that curse thee. Listen to this last part of verse 3. In thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. He does everything he does for a purpose. So I want to release, and I'm going to walk through this, um, not even preach it. I'll just kind of give it to you as a list. I want you to write these. These are the things that he promises in Joel chapter 2. And these promises, Pastor Roland, are for the people of God. These promises are for our now, Charlene. But these promises also have in mind what I just said to you. If he blesses you, it is so you can be a blessing. The first promise in verse 21, the promise that the Lord will do great things. Look at verse 21. Joel chapter 2 verse 21. Fear not. Come on. Come on, church. Fear not, O land. Be glad and for the Lord will do great things. The first promise is that the Lord will do great things. Somebody lift your hands and say, do it, Lord. Come on. I need you to receive it today. Lift your hand and say, do it, Lord. The Lord will do great things. The promise is the Lord will do great things. I want you to understand, it's not by might nor by power, but what's about to happen is going to be the hand of the Lord. The Lord will do great things. And I want to say to someone today, it doesn't matter how it looks now. It doesn't matter the context of what you're dealing with. If the Lord promises to do great things, you need to stand in readiness for the promise because great things are on the way. Great things are about to happen. For God's people, in the midst of whatever happens around us, great things are happening for us. The promise is that the Lord will do great things. Come on, someone shout, the Lord will do great things. Say it again, the Lord will do great things. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Listen, I came to tell someone today, the Lord will do great things. You're not exiting this planet in defeat. Even when you exit this planet, you are exiting with victory because the Lord will do great things for you. I wish I had a witness in the house today. The Lord will do great things for you. Hallelujah. He promises that he will do great things. And Jesse, this is for his people. He promises to do great things for his people. Verse 21, he's going to do it for his people. The second promise in this text, in this string of promises, verse 22, he promises a fruitful season. A fruitful season. And I, again, I want to say this in context. I want to say this in context. That we understand every blessing from the Lord is to advance his kingdom. Every blessing from the Lord is is to fulfill his purpose. Come on. And I, I want you to get this. Oh, please, Lord, let them get this. Every blessing from the Lord is to fulfill his promise and his purpose in the earth. It is not for your personal consumption. It is not for your personal enjoyment. It is for his kingdom advancement. Understand, if, if you get the revelation that he is blessing you so you can be a blessing, the blessing is released quicker. Rather than if you're walking around thinking, he's blessing me because I deserve it. Or he's blessing me because I prayed for it. Or he's blessing me to make my enemies envious. You think, you think God is in heaven worried about your insecurity on how your enemies feel about you? God is about his kingdom. I want you to hear this today, church. He's about his kingdom. Verse 22. Look, 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 look at verse 22. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastors of the wilderness do spring. The tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine tree do yield their strength. Their strength. Their, in other words, there's a the, the, he's he promised a fruitful season. Lift your hands, everyone. A fruitful season. A fruitful season for the church. A fruitful season for the body of Christ. 
And again, understand the context, Pastor Rachel, is the fruitful season is so you can be an agent of change to fulfill his work in the earth. And the agenda of the king is he's closing human history. And before he closes this thing, he's bringing us into a time of fruitfulness. It's not for us to live and think to ourselves, now we got it, we are blessed forever. We are blessed so we can bless somebody else. Somebody has heard your gospel, but there's never, they've never seen it. You miss it. They heard your gospel, but they never saw it. And when you can be a blessing to somebody else, then they see the gospel and they believe the God you talk about. And for some of you, the only thing stopping you from being witnesses for Christ is you have nothing in your hands to give. And therefore, they hear you with their hearts, but reject you. But when they, when they see you, tell them God is good. And then show them God is good. A tangible manifestation of the goodness of God is, is a convincing element that some people are going to say, I believe there is a God. So the fruitful season is coming, Dina. So that the gospel message can get out. Come on, lift your hands. So you, if, you, if you get it, if you get it, if you get the revelation of why he's blessing you, then you understand, then he releases the blessing to you. God is not putting the blessing in your hand, taking it out of somebody else's hand, putting it in your hands for, uh, for it to be abused. If that's the case, you might as well left it in the hands of the sinners. Come on, raise your hands, everyone. There, there is something coming to your hands. If your heart is conditioned with the understanding, Dwight, to do what you need to do with what he, what he gives you. A fruitful season is coming for the church. Oh God, I, I felt this in my spirit. Pastor Rachel, I hear him say, I'm about to give supernatural acceleration of, of finances, supernatural acceleration of land and property, supernatural acceleration of all kinds of favor. He said, but I'm doing this for the cause of my gospel advancing. Lift your hands. Every, lift your hands. This is personal, personal. Every one of you that have held, that have dealt with impediments in your personal life that stop you from being agents of change. That thing is being moved out of your life right now in the name of Jesus. Every impediment that blocks you from being an agent of change, from, that blocks you from being a person of influence, that blocks you from being a person, a witness of Christ, somebody that can testify and not just testify, but speak to the very thing they testify. Everything that was blocking you from doing that is now moved out of your way. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, I wish I had a church to receive this word today. Fruitful season is coming for the church. This fruitful season is not coming for the immature, unspiritual, carnal. This is coming for the ones who are matured. This is coming for the ones who have grown up. This is coming for the ones who, have, who understand why he is sending the blessing. Come on, Pastor Roland, go through scripture. Every time you read about the blessings of God, every time you read about God favoring a people, it is always on behalf of what he is doing on behalf of them. It was never just to bless them. He blessed Isaac so Isaac can fulfill the covenant he made. The blessing always has covenant connections to it. The blessing is never a personal thing that God says, I just want to bless you. He blesses you to be a blessing. Lift your hands, everyone. He blesses you to be a blessing. And something is coming. Something is being released in the earth for the people of God, a fruitful season. And then the third thing I want you to Receive today. Thank you. You may receive. You may put your hands on. The third thing I want you to receive is in verse 23. He promises, and this will be said a few weeks ago, double rain. Verse 23 says, be glad, children of Zion. 
Rejoice in the Lord your God. Come on. For he's given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. We explained it in this regard that the rain, the first rain was to prepare the ground for planting, Sister Jones. The second rain was to prepare the, the, the fruit on the trees for harvesting. So both rains were essential. And I came to tell you, church, there's about to be two rains in one month. He's bringing, he's bringing two rains in one month. Hallelujah. I said he's bringing two rains in one month. Hallelujah. It's, it, there is supernatural rain about to hit this planet. And I'm not talking about a rain that any government can bring. I'm not talking about a rain that any human, bring, human being can bring. I'm talking about a supernatural rain that's coming directly from heaven, Minister Diamond. This one can't be stopped by your boss who don't like you. This one can't be stopped by the politician who you didn't support. This one is coming directly from the hand of God. And he's giving you the form rain, the first rain, and the latter rain in one month, he's getting ready to fulfill a promise. In fact, I came to say to someone today, what the last generation failed to receive, he's about to put it on this generation because you're about to do what Grammy didn't get to do. You're about to do what Granddaddy didn't get to do because you're walking in an order because the kingdom has to advance. What Grammy and them miss, God is about to put in your hands. Somebody lift your hands right now and receive this. Hallelujah. There is a grace that's about to rest on you. That with the last generation fail, what the last generation had as a lack, this generation will not lack. Because this generation is about to walk with the double rain. Somebody shout the double rain, the double rain, the double rain, the two rains in one month, right? Double rain, double rain. So come on, somebody declare this today, double rain, double rain. He is about to bless you with double rain. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And for some of you, and, and here's the revelation, Charlene. The revelation is this: some of us are in the seed time of our life. When we are just about to plant, and others are in the harvest time of their life when they are just about to reap after having planted and waited. But God says, I'm about to bring all of those seasons together. The planting and the harvesting season, I'm bringing. So I'm causing everyone to experience both seasons in one, wrapped up in one. Somebody shout again, double rain. I see it coming, double rain. For your double pain, God says, I'm giving you double rain. For your double tears, God says, I'm giving you double rain. Am I talking to the mature church today? For your double issues, God says, I'm giving you double rain. Mm. Then the, the, the fourth promise is found in verse 24. We're walking through these promises together. Verse 24, the promise is supernatural harvest. The floors shall be full of wheat. The fats shall overflow with wine. And or lift your hands. I declare and decree over you a harvest, supernatural harvest, as never yet before. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. I, I declare over you, hallelujah. Your fats are about to burst out with new wine. Hallelujah. Ideas, strategies are coming to the church. The people of God are about to be filled with strategies, ideas. He's giving you inventions. Come on, he's giving you innovations. I'm talking to the church. Come on, I wish somebody would receive this. He's putting innovation in your spirit. He's putting new inventions, new ideas, new strategies in your heart. In your Nobody has to do it for you anymore. God says, I'm going to put it in you. What you're about to do, what you need for the rest of your life. I'm about to cause you to plan your own self. I'm about to cause you to birth your own self. No longer do you have to wait around for some godparents or wait around for somebody to have you in favor. God says, I'm about to cause you to produce on your own. Hallelujah. Supernatural harvest. And why? Why is he doing all of this? He's doing all of this because he's in advanced mode. I said he's doing all of this because he's in advanced mode. Did you hear me today, church? Uh, did you hear me? The kingdom is in advanced mode. 
Hallelujah. Every, de de every delay, Dina, is over. I I I'm trying to say this in the church till you get this. The kingdom is in advanced mode, right? That's why he's doing this in a hurry. That's why he's doing this in a hurry. That's why there's an urgency resting on this, Pastor Rachel. There's an urgency resting on what's about to happen for you next. Because the kingdom is in advanced mode. Time is short, Rachel Rule. Time is short, Rachel Rule. The kingdom is in advance. If not now, when? The kingdom is in advance. Well, somebody lift your hand. Some of you are hearing me today and you still don't believe it. But Elishai, I need some, I need some, I need some, some, some burners in the house today. I, I need some midwives who are not just receiving this for you, but are going to help the people produce what God has put in their heart to produce. There is a sense of advancing of this thing because the hour is late. There are sense in, there's a sense in which Minister Diamond, he is shortening the, the waiting period. He's shortening the waiting period because the time is short. So your ground, your ground is about to produce supernatural harvest because the hour is late. Hallelujah. I don't care how rough the ground may seem, Charlene. You are about to produce, mark my words, supernatural harvest because the hour is late. What should have taken two years to fully mature is going to be done in the next three months. I just said something and I don't know who I'm prophesying to. I don't know who I'm prophesying to. I just said something. What should have taken two years is going to manifest in the next three months, saith the Lord, because the hour is advancing. The kingdom is advancing. We're in an advanced stage. Lift your hands. The wait is over. I said the wait is over. The wait is over, says the Lord. God says, I'm doing this because I, I'm, I'm, closing, I'm closing the books. Minister Diamond, he said, I'm closing the books. But before I close the books, I'm about to write every wrong. Before I close the books, Dwight, I'm about to fix everything. I made some promises, and I'm not a man that I should lie. I'm not the son of man that I should repent. If I said it, I'm going to do it. Pastor Rachel, if I promise it, I will perform it. If I promise it, Sam, I will perform it. I'm not going to look like a liar, God says. You're going to turn me into a liar. I promise I'm going to do it, so I'm going to do it. Hallelujah. The hour is late. The bracket is closing in. So I got to finish off some things. I got to reconcile my books before everything shuts down. Before I close everything, Elisha and God says, I'm going to reconcile my books. There are some, lift your hands. I just heard the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God says, I, I got to vindicate some of you. I got to recompense some of you for your pain. Come on, I wish I had a church. I wish I had about 13 of you that heard me today. God says, I'm about to reconcile all your pain, all your sorrow, some things I was supposed to visit next year. I'm going to visit it next month because I'm shortening the time. He says there's some victories. Come on, church. There's some victories, Dwight, that were six years ahead of you. And God says, I'm not going to wait for the six years. I'm going to bring you the victory before you get to the middle of February. I'm going to produce a victory for you. Before you exit the month of January, Minister Diamond, you're going to see this victory because you waited for the last seven years for me to act on your behalf. And God said, I didn't delay just to delay it. I delayed because I'm bringing something supernatural. And what I'm birthing in your life is going to be far bigger than what you let go. Oh, God. Oh, God, what I'm about to produce, says the Lord, is going to be far bigger than what you let go. Hallelujah. Somebody need to hear this. 
there's a there's a back up victory coming to you says the lord you should have already walked in this six years ago but god said i allowed the enemy to hold it back and delay it but the delay is over because my plan is now in advanced mode somebody shout advanced mode that's why the ground that you are standing on even the ground you're standing on is sanctified even now. There's a fruitful, there, there, there is a fruitful ground under your feet. That is, some of you need to be getting out call for the fruit. There is a fruitful ground under your feet. Some of you are looking around for somebody else to start you off and to bless you. But open your sanctified mouth and Dina begin to call for that the ground under you. Shaka, Yadama Shoto, the ground under you. The ground has been commanded to produce. I said the ground under you has been commanded to produce. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hands right now. I don't care what they shut down, Dwight. The ground under you has been commanded to produce. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will not beg bread. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody need to know God's word. You will not beg bread. Your seed will not beg bread. Because the ground under you has been commanded to produce for you. Ah, Jesus. Number five. Number five, he says, in verse 25, the promise is the promise to restore the years. Ah, God. I want to read this in your hearing. Put in verse 25, I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And carefully notice, as we've said before, Elishayan, carefully notice this. He doesn't promise Charlene to restore things. Because things you can always get back. <sighs> only, only God can give you back time. Anyone can give you back things. Th that, that's why. That's why the truth is, um, 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 uh, Pastor Rachel. There's some of us who th they didn't understand us because they thought we would come running back behind them, trying to get the things that they took from us. But Elishayan, we we have far mature than that. We don't run behind things, Samantha. Whatever you take from me, if your hand can hold it, keep it. What God is about to give me back, your hands got to take from me. And that is time. He says, I'm going to restore. Come on. I'm going to restore your youth like an eagle. Somebody lift your hands. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up in wings of eagles. Help me, somebody. They shall run and not go weary. They shall walk and not faint. Lift your hands. Your years are being restored. The eight years you dealt with that bad situation. God says, I'm restoring those eight years back to you. And I'm not just giving you those eight years back, Minister Diamond. I'm giving you back eight years with interest. I wish I had a sanctified church. Maybe I'm prophesying to those who are watching. God says, I'm not just giving you back eight years. I'm giving you back eight years with interest. For your pain. For your pain, I'm, I'm adding double. Ah, Jesus. I will give you double for your trouble. I'm giving you back your years. Lift your hands. Your years are coming back. Lift your hands, church. Your years are coming back. 
Some of you had some ideas in your youth that were stolen from you. Some of you, you had your youth robbed from you. You were forced into something too soon. And God says, I'm going to fix it before the clock runs out. God says, I'm about to fix it in your life. Come on. I, I need this church to hear this word today because the minute I've released this word, John, something is happening in the spiritual realm. See, that's why those of you that sit in the sanctuary idle and act like you're not hearing anything, don't get mad with the rest of us who are activated, actively bringing this word to pass in our life because every time you hear the word, you got to respond to the words. I'm not a magician. I'm not here to work miracles for you. I'm not here to work magic for you. Everything I speak is a seed. And if your heart is right and the ground is right and you do what is right with the seed, something happens. But sit there and do nothing and nothing happens. Did you hear me? Sit here and do nothing and nothing happens. So you heard a word that doesn't even benefit you. Because you're sitting waiting for the preacher to bring it to pass in your life. I'm not, a, I'm not here to bring it to pass. I'm here to declare it. Your years are coming back. Let me, let me release it to you. Your years are coming back. Your years are coming back. I see the strength of your life coming back. <laughs> Somebody's getting their second win. Who am I prophesying to? Somebody's getting your somebody's getting your second win. You, you, you thought you were out of breath. But God says, I'm giving you a respite. I'm gonna put back in you everything that the struggle took out of you. Did I just prophesy to someone today? I, I need to find out. God says, I'm going to put back in you everything the struggle took out of you. Everything that whole dr dramatic experience robbed from you. God says, I'm giving it back to you. I'm filling you back up again. And it's going to be like you've never been through that thing. It's almost going to be as if he never existed in your life. It's almost going to be as if you never met her. Because God says, when I restore the years, I'm actually getting ready to remove some things and people from your memory. I, I hear the Lord saying, I'm getting ready to remove not just the person, but even the memory of the person. Somebody will have to remove you of who he was. Somebody gonna have to remind you of what she did to you because God's getting ready to remove it clean from your memory. I will restore the years. The years is being restored. Oh God, you labored in tears when God says, I'm restoring the years. Number six, he gives a promise of plenty. Look at verse 26. Hallelujah, that's fine. Come on, let her cry. She knows exactly why she is weeping. Verse 26 says, you shall eat in plenty. Come on. Come on, church. Come on, church. You shall eat in plenty, verse 26, and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be a shame. The promises of the promise of plenty. Lift your hands. I declare in your life the season of lack and struggle, the season of burden, the season of limitation is now over and ended, says the Lord. You have entered the season of plenty, says the Lord. Not just do you, not just are you gonna have plenty, Samantha, but Minister, Minister Diamond, he says you will eat and be satisfied. Charlene, do you know how many people are eating but not satisfied? Because satisfaction comes from God. Only God can give an appetite. 
Only God can bring satisfaction. Somebody could bring you food, but only God can bring you satisfaction. Hands raised in this house. Everyone watching this, you will eat and you will be satisfied. You will enjoy the blessings of the Lord and you will be satisfied and you will be a conduit of that blessing. That hour is late. The agenda is, is we are deep in the agenda. It's an advancing agenda. The books are about to close, but before the books close, Pastor Rachel, before the books close, he says, I'm about to bring satisfaction in your life. Hands raised, everyone. Satisfaction. I'm bringing satisfaction for your pain. God says, I'm, 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 I'm bringing satisfaction in your life. Hallelujah, Jesus. You've struggled. You've gone through, Dwight. You, you've bowed your head. Doors have shut in your face, Elisha. And you, you've had to walk away with, the, with, with defeat, knowing that you were the right one. But God says, I'm about to bring satisfaction in your life. You will eat and be satisfied. But Charlene, here's what I like what he says. He, 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 already, ad, he already acknowledges prophetically. The prophet doesn't just say, Pastor, Pastor Roland, he doesn't just say, you're going to eat, you're going to be satisfied. But the prophet already saw your response. The prophet said, you will eat in plenty. You will be satisfied. But he also prophesied your response. He says, you shall praise. Oh, I, that was a suggestion. <laughs> Half of the church missed it. I'm going to read it again. You will eat in plenty. You will be satisfied. And you will praise. That, listen, when I said that, you ought to go off and praise. The prophet already saw your response. You will praise the name of the Lord who has done wondrously, who dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. My people shall never be ashamed. Lift your hands. My people shall never be ashamed. Oh God. The promise of plenty. Then I want you to look at verse 27. I'm wrapping up. Verse 27, Pastor Roland, is the promise of a greater knowledge of God. Listen to this, Charlene. Verse 27. He promises a greater knowledge of God. Verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else of my people shall never be ashamed. So he promises a greater knowledge of God. Lift your hands. In the closing days of this human history, you're getting ready to know God like you've never known him before. Hallelujah. I, thank you, Sam. I'm, I'm going to say it again. You're getting ready to know God like you've never known him before. No one will have to tell you about God by reference. You're getting ready to know him by experience. Like never yet before, Sally, you're getting ready to know him. You're going to brag about him. You're going to speak confidently about him. You will declare. You will declare him to the nations, Minister Diamond, because you know him. You will declare him Rachel Roll to the nations because you know him. You know him. You will declare him because you know him. Lift your hands. There's getting ready to be a greater revelation knowledge of God. There's getting ready to be a greater, a greater revelation knowledge of God that you're getting ready to experience like you've never experienced before. Everybody watching this today, wherever you are, Get ready for a visitation from the Lord. I said, get ready for a visitation from... I'm speaking and I, I need the church to, to... Get ready for a visitation, a divine visitation from the Lord. You're getting ready to know him in the power of his might, in the fellowship of his suffering, 
you're getting ready to be conformable to his death. Oh, to know him today. Ah, Jesus. You heard Jesse's poem today. In the wrong place. But that's not speaking of you. Because after today, you're going to grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I said after today, you're getting ready to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You're going to know him for yourself. See, there's one thing about knowing him that no one can take from you. When you know him for yourself, you can look in the face of difficulties and say, whatever my Lord, thou hast taught me to say. Come on. It is well. Oh, you can only say that when you know him. You can look in the face of darkness and then you can still declare, whatever my Lord, thou hast taught me to say it as well with my soul. A greater knowledge of him. Number eight, I give you one more after this. Number eight, look at verse 20. Verse 28. I love this, Jesse. Psalm says, and it shall come to pass afterward, Elishayan, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Ha, ah, Jesus. And I want to ask even right now, every person under the age of 30, stand. Every person quickly under the age of 30, stand. And I don't want you just to stand. I want you to come forward to the front. No matter what you're doing, put, if you're on the camera, put the camera down. Under 30, I want you to come and stand in the front. The midwives are going to help you. We're going to do the rest today. Hallelujah, Jesus. This is a promise that the sons and daughters shall prophesy. Hallelujah. Come on, I want you to come to the altar with praise on your lips. I want you to come to the altar. Come on. Midwives, I need you to stand. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. You, 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 some of you haven't been around church long enough because you don't understand how to push these kinds of things. Listen, while they're here at the altar, you ought to already be ministering to the Lord on their behalf. Now the host at the altar with your hands raised up, begin to worship. Don't look to me, look up to heaven. Begin to worship, young people. Come on, hands raised. Hands raised, young people. Begin to worship him today. Saints, I need everybody in the audience to stand. I need all the midwives to stand. And I need you to stretch your hand toward these young people today. Come on, midwives. Come on, midwives. Come on, midwives. Stretch your hand toward these young people today. Don't let it be that we missed another moment because we didn't know how to capture a vision from God and a visitation from the Lord. Come on, young people. I want you to begin to cry out to God today. Come on, young people. Cry out. I need the midwives to press into them. Push your hand toward them and pray for them. My God. This is a moment in the service where we should have seen fire. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. hallelujah Jesus come on let's pray I need the midwives come on midwives come on midwives I feel something about to break young people person at the altar I want you to cry out to the Lord today come on I want to hear some people crying out to the altar today hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus come on 
do a work in these young people, Lord. I pray that you touch them right now. Let your fire fall upon them right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Pour your spirit upon them right now, God. Mm, mm, mm. My God, my God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. We cover them right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We cover them right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody clap your hands and give praise to the Lord today. Remain, remain right where you are. Young people, would you stretch out a little bit more? You got a lot of space on this side. Stretch out a little bit more, young people. Please stretch out. I want the young people to stay here. Stretch out. And listen. I believe that I believe that what the Lord put as a gift in Jesse's mouth today. is for each of you to examine yourself. Let me talk to the youths first. For each of you to examine yourselves to make sure you are not in the wrong place. And I want to make sure, Ashley, that blood is off my hands. Because, you see, as a watchman, I must say to you, make your calling and election sure. And you heard the passion of which Jesse spoke. Assuming all the way to the very end, two people in front of her, she's sure she's going to make it in. Only to be told at the last moment, and I want you to hear this, at the moment when it's too late to correct it, depart from me. See, today you can correct anything in your spiritual life. You can correct it today, but on the day of judgment, wherever you stand, let him who is righteous be righteous still. Let him who is holy be holy still, but let him who is filthy be filthy still. When I ask that you would bow your heads, the young people at the altar, bow your heads today and I'm not going to ask you to make a verbal or even a manifested expression of your decision today but I want to ask you to look in your hearts right now and many of you watching this today you have young people in your house 
I want to challenge you to command them to do the very same thing, to think about their life. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Hallelujah, Jesus. So I'm not going to ask you to make a decision. I'm not going to ask you to fix it, correct it in front of us because what's more important, what's most important is that you are connected before God. That he knows you and you know him. So I'm going to simply pray for these young people at the altar. I'm going to pray for every young person represented. Parents at home, those of you with your young persons, I want to challenge you to speak to them even right now. Ask them to do this. Get them to stand up. Get them to examine themselves. Put aside everything now. This is kingdom business. Remember now we are in an advanced agenda. The kingdom agenda is in the advanced stage. He is closing the books. He's bringing everything to a close. But just before he does it, Jesse, he's leaving the door of mercy open for one more day. The door of mercy is open for one more day. And no one can tell when he will shift from his mercy throne and sit on his judgment throne. But before it happens, young people, make sure that you are your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. I'm going to pray for the young people that are standing in, at the altar and the young people that are standing at home wherever you are. And, and all the persons, I'm not forgetting about you. But we just read about the young people, so I want to release this word. Father, I pray today that you would do a work in the lives of these young people. As the days are winding down, may they live their lives for your glory. May they not be distracted by the world's glitter and glares. May they not run after things that you have not assigned for them. May they capture the urgency of this moment and live the rest of their days for your glory and for your honor. We pray this in Jesus' name. And now we pray for every person. Remain standing. We pray for every person, no matter what age, no matter what stage. I ask, oh God, that you would touch each person today, that they would examine themselves to see whether they are in the faith. Oh God, may we not be hearers of the word, but not doers. And God, like Paul says, we don't want to be a castaway to the very thing that we preach. Oh God, cause us to make this determination sure that we are standing in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You can go back to your seats, young persons. Please remain standing, everyone. Remain standing, everyone. I close with this last challenge. Remain standing, everyone. I close with this last challenge, this last promise, and I want you to read it with me. You can put it up on the screen. Verse 30, the promise of his return. The promise of his return. I walked you through all the promises, right? And now verse 30 to verse 32, the promise of his return. Verse 30 says, and I will show, come on. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, verse 31, and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord had said in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. But verse 31 says, the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon shall be turned into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Bow your heads. Father, today, as a people, we stand asking you to examine our hearts. We want to be right with you, God. We want to be a part of the number that are marching in. 
We don't want to be a part of those who say, Lord, Lord, did we not preach in your name? Did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name did mighty works. And for you to say, I never knew you. I, we want to be on the right place, in the right place, in the right place, on the right side of your judgment. Father, we cover every person under the sound of my voice today. I pray that you would strengthen and bless your people today. We pray for a confidence in who we are and a confidence in who we are in you today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Would you clap your hands and give praise to the Lord today? Come on, all over this sanctuary. That, come on, come on, come on. Clap your hands all over the sanctuary. Hallelujah. And give praise unto the Lord today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we thank you again as we prepare our hearts even now to give into this work. We ask that you would bless the hands of the givers. Bless every person today. We ask this in Jesus' name. While you're while you standing, everyone remain standing. Would you just get your offerings together, please? And we're going to do this as quick as we can. Rachel Roll will come. I'm sure she will. And she will guide you. And please, as we leave, we want to leave as we did in the last several weeks with a strong sense of order. Please, no fellowship, no hugging. And I know you're excited to see everyone, but no hugging, no felt, no touching at all. Please, if you would, um, just hug with your eyes. And we urge you to do that. We don't want to take anything for granted. Um, we pray for those who are recuperating and are getting better. Please know that, word members, we are we miss you. We feel your presence, and we are praying for you. We pray your strength. We pray your healing. We pray your restoration. Um, please feel free to join us this week. Um, we're going to resume Bible study, but we're not going to have in service Bible study. We're going to have Zoom Bible study on Tuesday night. So we urge everyone, we're going to post the information for everyone to join us on Zoom Bible study on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And we'll go with that format for the next several weeks as necessary. And all of our other meetings, we'll suspend in-person meetings, uh, men's meeting, women's meeting, all of those things. We'll kind of give more update on those things as the weeks progress. But for now, we will be on Zoom on Tuesday night. Um, the leadership I'll share with you later on during the week. We'll meet on Zoom as well um, during the week as we put together our vision plan for 2022. And a lot, of been, a lot has been held in motion because of the pressing issue of physical challenges. But we thank God today that we were able to bring his word to you today. Amen. We thank God that we were able to bring the word of God to you today. Tides raise in the air. Father, we thank you today that your word promises that you'll open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon those who are faithful in their tithe. I ask, oh God, that you would bless these tithes that are raised today. Thank you, God, for the faithful giving of your people. We pray in Jesus' name. Would you raise your offerings today, please? Offering of any kind. And we challenge you on last week concerning um, a particular offering that I'm not going to speak of, but you know what I'm talking about. If somebody is important to you, please make sure that you remind them on a regular basis. Enough said. Amen. Oh, that took a lot for me to say that. So yeah, I can never say that no more, but it needs it needs to be said. Thank you so much for hearing. You had an air to hear, let it be. Father, we thank you for these offerings that are going to be given today. We ask that you would bless the hands of the givers today. Bless each person as we come to worship you with our gifts today. Bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Rachel Rule, would you please guide them out? And Rachel, make sure they don't, if they touch, spank. No touching. Amen. God bless you, everyone. We love you. Have a wonderful day. Drive safe. Please be safe. See you online on Tuesday night. You can take us out, BJ.
God bless you, everyone.